Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio by a pretty profound and amazing woman. And her name is Rachel Fiore, the mystical therapist. Rachel, how are you? I am super fantastic, and I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're, you are more than welcome, and I'm grateful to have you. And as I was telling Rachel off air, this is a total synchronistic moment because YouTube served up a podcast of hers uh, with uh, Josh Trent of Wellness Force, again, randomly of all things. And as I was telling her, and you know, for most of my audience, you guys know, I don't really watch podcasts. I just make content and go about my day. Uh, but I started watching, I was sitting on a plane with my wife flying back from Miami to San Diego very recently. And, um, the next day, it might've even been that morning early, um, her PR agency sent an email to me promoting her, asking about her to get on the J Campbell podcast. And I looked at the name and I was like, why do I know that name? And so then, you know, I went into my YouTube history and I'm like, this is insane, like <laughs> unbelievable. But that's why she's on the podcast today. She is very advanced uh, healer, consciousness person, just somebody that fits right into the Jay Campbell it, uh, mythos at this point in time. So let me give you guys her background. She is an MSOT, which is a master's of, of science, science, master's of science and occupational therapy, CEO of Masters of Self University. A mystical therapist, which you definitely own the title of the best name ever on the Jay Campbell podcast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Spiritual teacher and elite coach for high profile people and couples. She is the lead mystical professor teaching the mystical life coach certification program at MSU with a, with a master's of science in occupational therapy, specializing in mental, emotional, and behavioral health, a BA in business, corporate communications, a psychic empathic healer, and an HSP, which is a highly sensitive person, which many and many of those folks around the world are now waking up to that if they didn't already understand that. Yes. Uh, she has spent the past 23 years empowering individuals, coaches, and helps high profile people across the world to heal their lives and relationships at the soul level. So again, perfect. I'm so grateful to have you here. As I've been doing um, recently, but a profound uh, energetic portal. Uh, today, the conjunction, I think of Neptune and Pluto and a bunch of other things, but, uh, just a very high energy day across the planet. So I'm again, perfect person to be speaking with, but as I've been asking folks, uh, we find ourselves, uh, I want to say planetary wide in a precarious position without really saying it's negative or positive, right? Because it's what we make it to be. Uh, the planet is going through turbulence, where do you see, you know, this planet? And I'm obviously very uh, glass half full. You know, I am creating and manifesting a golden age, a new earth. And I know that you're one of those architects uh, yep. as am I. But where do you see this planet right now, again, in the early part of 2022 going? Like, are we, is there, you know, the, the ancient text, the darkness before dawn, before we get to where we want to go, is is that kind of what you think is, is happening now or what we're going to have to see from a consciousness perspective? I, I teach that what our responsibility is, is to awaken to our own darkness with our light. Right. And we are the micro and the macro is a reflection of what we are. Right. Right. So it's when you see um, more and more of the darkness that is, you know, coming to the surface globally, it's the question really is not just what's going on out there, all of them. Mm -hmm. What darkness do I have within me? How am I causing harm in my relationships, in my life, in my business to the planet? Because when I awaken to that, I am now starting to function in the first way of oneness, which is the way of responsibility. 
am willing to take responsibility for my energy, for my life, how I show up in the world, for my relationships, and I'm willing to become a light warrior and heal everything, every aspect of my darkness, so I can authentically shine my light. When you look at it from that perspective, that is every human's responsibility. And the more people that can awaken to their own inner light, their true, authentic, divine selves, then there is nothing, there's nowhere for the darkness to hide. The light shines on everything. So if we stop with the spiritual bypassing bullshit and stop acting like, well, it's something that will happen or won't happen. No, we're going to make it happen when you stop at nothing to shine your own light very authentically. No one can shine light when they have darkness within them that they're refusing to heal and take a look at. It's beautifully well said. I mean, you know, to, to give, you know, what you're saying is, you know, we are literally a mirror, you know, this is the world ourselves is a cosmic mirror. You know, it's yep. the whole, you know, also the ancient statement of as above, so below. I mean, you know, everything is a, like you said, a microcosm of the macrocosm. So it does take, each of us getting to a level of, you know, are we going to deal with our shit? You know, are we going to integrate our shadow, our trauma, you know, the things yep. that hold us back? And let me just liken it to something that's happening right now because it's front and center. You know, what's happening in Canada right now, right? Like the prime minister has essentially become a dictator, right? In that country. So all of these people, and, you know, I'm sure you know plenty of people in Canada. Uh, as I do, you know, I'm in private groups and stuff and I've been messaging people and stuff like that. And, you know, there, some of these people are very advanced and it's like, you know, what are we to do? But it's going back to what you just said. It's not what are we meaning everybody. It's what can you personally do for your collective shadow? Because again, it does take each of us individually working on our inner game or, or working inwardly to manifest and create, you know, an external that reflects what is being improved on inwardly. Yeah. And what people I think don't actually get, they don't realize that when you, everything is energy, we are nothing but energy. So whatever darkness you have in there, whatever traumas you have in there, whatever unhealed stuff, the shame, the grief, the whatever, the depression, the anxiety, when you let that go unhealed, that is what you're putting out into the world. It's time to wake up to how we are actually showing up in the world versus how we like to think we're showing up mm -hmm. with like the, the masks and the facade that we like to put on social media. So we get the followers and the likes and the hearts and the comments and all the bullshit that mean nothing. You know, it's how authentically are we in our light? And that's really the question because we have to start there. People don't realize that you can go protest anything you want, but how much hate and anger and rage do you have? That's what you're putting out to the world. And you think you're going to heal a dictator, the darkness that comes from someone like that and his supporters, you're going to heal that darkness with your hate and rage and anger and your practicing of inequality because you cannot understand that you're behaving as somebody that's inferior or superior, right? It all boils down to waking up for real. And that means doing the work on yourself and then joining together with others who are waking up for real. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the last two years has been, you know, one gigantic fear phenomenon. Yes. From the media. Yep. From the narrative, from obviously you just said it, social media, you know, it's been this like, you know, uh, important thing to embrace wearing a mask, to embrace social distancing, to embrace all of this, you know, what I call demonic, you know, negativity. And now, you know, Trudeau is the manifestation of all of that collective shadow and fear rising up. And so he has a bully pulpit and he has a statement or a, a forum, you know, again, based on the narrative that was created in the last two years. And it's obviously not just in Canada. It's right. a lot of other countries where you yes. have a similar you know, tyrannical dictatorial uh, rulership. And it's crazy because like, it, it seems like it was going to happen here and maybe it still will, you know, in the States. I mean, who knows? I mean, with the puppet government that we have here going on now, but you know, without getting into politics and stuff like that, it's an interesting time. And, 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 mm -hmm. and that's why I have you on the show, you know, to talk mm -hmm. about this so that people can truly understand what it is going to take for us to create this golden age, this architecting of this new earth. 
Yeah. I mean, it, it always starts with, so here's, let me give you one example of where people make mistakes and get ready. Cause everybody listen, a lot of you are going to get really fucking triggered by this. <laughs> You're going, I'm warning you now. You're going to get really fucking triggered when I tell you to stop finding your fucking tribes. That's one of the biggest mistakes. People will find your tribe, find your tribe. This thing has been going on for how many years now? Find your tribe. Guess what? That traps you in a lower level of emotional and spiritual maturity. Right. You are not growing up evolving when you surround yourself with people who are just like you, who right. are an echo chamber, who don't challenge, oh, we grow in just positive ways. It's all spiritual bypassing bullshit, where you sit around your fire and you write down what you want to let go of and you burn it in the fire. That shit needs to stop. We need to knock it off. This is what I mean about it's time to wake the hell up, but actually wake up this time for real this time. Because you don't write something on a piece of paper and burn it in a fire, have a water ceremony with it, or dance around half naked and you think that's what makes it go away. That isn't. Because you're not learning what it means to face your fears and literally transmute energy that is trapped in your beingness in your body. We are energy. So people waking up means you have to be willing to learn energetics and what that really means. Emotions are energetic. Depression is energetic. And writing your crap on a piece of paper and your traumas thinking that's going to go away with a ceremony is ridiculous. And that is actually how evil works its way through people. It's sneaky. You do some stupid little ritual and you think, poof, done. You didn't have to do any work. Did you have to go in and feel your trauma and learn what it means to become the light itself, that energetic frequency in order to transform it? If you haven't learned that, you've got a long way to go. This is what it takes to wake up. And I'm so passionate about waking up for real, healing for real, people stepping into their real, authentic, divine power. That is exactly why I created my Mystical Life Coach certification. And the people we have from all over the world learning this level of work, it is nothing short of profound. I mean, it's amazing. People are now healing things that they've struggled with their entire lives. And I mean people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and older because they're doing this level of work. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. So what I didn't tell you is, is that while I was sitting on the uh, plane before my internet got cut off, I actually went through your application and I got to like almost the end because I was so inspired and then it blew up and then I went back to being Jay Campbell. <laughs> so I cannot, are you I serious? That's amazing. No, I literally said to my wife when she woke up <clears throat> later, cause we did have internet later. But see, I was on my phone. So mm. I went all the way through it and I was, dee -dee -dee -dee, and then boom, it blew up. It, it got me on, you know, I was flying on Alaska and it said, you're connected. And then it was gone. And oh. I was like, oh my God, I'm not going back to that. But anyway, <laughs> I, I, you know, then this happened and I was like, oh, well, I'll just talk to her anyway. But, uh, but to all of that, like I'm reading, I, I, I'm a voracious reader. Um, but in addition to just like learning, you know, I do integrate, I do sit in silence. I, I have a really powerful inner practice. And, I got this book when I was in Peru in 2019. It's called Children of the Light. And most of the listeners on my podcast know the backstory of this. It's a phenomenal, but I won't, I, I want to talk to you more, but this book is a, a phenomenal book. It was written in like 2001, republished, but it's essentially about the Incan and Mayan prophecies for the golden age, the new world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're talking about energy. Everything is energy. The Incans and the Mayans knew this yes. thousands of years ago because yes. the timelines are all BS. You know that. So yes. like these beings, whoever gave them this uh, advanced knowledge or this, you know, again, of string theory, quantum physics, the energetic universe, you know, waves and particles, this is where we have to go. And, and, and it's, it's mind blowing because I've been getting, you know, all sorts of downloads recently um, about energy and how, you know, light and bio photons and just all of this stuff. And so like, I really want you to like, if you can, we have a couple other bullet points, but I want to go deeper on this is like, can you kind of expound on so people can understand it? Cause I know you're really good at doing this. Like, what does it mean when you tell somebody that you're really nothing more than energy? Yeah. So I teach in a very practical way. I think people sometimes get scared. Like, Oh, I don't want to study quantum physics. I don't want to study, but you don't have to. You don't have to, but you do have to learn. This is in our mystical life coach certification program. Everybody learns 
how to deal with subtle energy. That means interpreting, seeing, feeling, reading it, and then transforming it into a higher frequency. So a simple practical example of that is everybody's familiar with negative emotions, positive emotions, and every emotion you feel is one example of a different subtle energy. Everybody feels subtle energies to some degree. Even if you don't pay that much attention, you know, when you're really angry, that is a vibrational frequency. That is energy that is moving through your body. You're detecting that, which is why you feel it, right? Emotional pain is, oh my God, I don't want to feel that. It's very uncomfortable. Well, you just stepped into your powerlessness, didn't you? Instead of just seeing this is a subtle energy communicating with me, telling me something I need to pay attention to, I need to heal, transform, it's communicating to you. That's why it's uncomfortable in the body. You learn to see and feel and detect subtle energies and absolutely transform the energy. Energy never dies. This is why the I always make the points of you can't, you know, burn your what you, your old trauma, something on healing a piece of paper, make it go away. It's no right. such thing because you're not literally transforming the energy inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. People that do inner child wound healing, a lot of times they don't realize they kind of start the healing. And they're like, but I still have this inner child thing. Well, that means it isn't healed. Right. right. Which means what we teach in our certification program and with our coaching programs is how to literally go in to the moment that energy, that program, whatever it is, is created and to transform it. We transmute it and we make the energy into a higher vibrational frequency. When you do that, that's permanent healing, right? So if you, when people are avoiding their emotions, when people spiritually bypass, you're literally running away from the subtle energies that are flowing through your own body. And that's why you don't heal. That's why you have the same damn argument with your spouse for 10 years straight. <laughs> and why can't it heal and go away? You didn't change the energy that is the program of that conflict. See, so everything we do is working with energy transformation. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. spiritual bypassing we should probably go a little deeper on that because i think it's you know the new age whatever that is the cosmology of a cosmology of the new age you know a lot of people um use that term now spiritual bypass and i don't really think they understand at the level that someone like you you know teaches right what it means so maybe you can kind of go a little deeper on that too sure yeah i love that so the easiest example that a lot of people will be able to relate to is positive vibes only. <laughs> Here's what I say to that. Go fuck your positive vibes. <laughs> so go fuck your positive vibes. You want to know why? A lot of people that preach that nonsense are completely ignoring the fact that we're all human. Right. We are not here to be robots and feel bliss every day, all day. That literally, when you learn how to work with energy and you understand energetics, that's part of our coaching program is what we teach. I teach it sure. for a reason because that's how you truly heal. When you learn energetics, you realize it isn't even possible for it to be the same exact energy all day, every day, blissful. I am emotionally free. I'm a very powerful person emotionally. I do not get triggered hardly ever by anything. I'm a very peaceful person. But it doesn't mean I'm one exact emotion or state of, of energy, state of frequency, state every day, all day. It's right. not even possible. No. You understand? So it's, it's spiritual bypassing, for example, is that good days only, positive vibes only, you know, right. good vibes only. It's ridiculous. Right. Here's what I say to those people. Oh, really? You're going to be positive vibes only? Okay. Well, here's your test. How about when the love of your life, your spouse, your child, someone you love more than anything, dies in a car crash tomorrow? I'm going to show up at your door. Good vibes Positive, only. Good vibes only today, right? You're not allowed to cry. You can't be in grief. It's positive vibes only. Now, how fucking ridiculous is that? Right. It is absolutely ridiculous. What we don't realize 
we are so weak. We are so weak as a species. We can't even handle some goddamn negative emotions. Right. Are you kidding me? Right. That's how weak we are as humans, that we can't go into pain, no matter how severe the grief is or whatever's going on, and sink deeply into that darkness, that pain, and right. simply transform it. Exactly. Because you're capable. Come learn how to do it. I'll teach you. But give me a break with the positive vibes only. Instead, it's all oh, negative vibes are there. What can I learn from this? What do I need to awaken to before I transmute it? That's a different perspective. Beautiful. You know, I, I can liken it to the statement, you know, the measure of a man or woman is how they perform under pressure. Right. And, you know, how is a person emotionally manage stress of the contrast? You know, I used to say in one of my first books I wrote, the gift is in the shit. Oh, I love that. Right. But it I is. Love it. it is. And, 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 but until we emotionally get to a level of awareness where it's okay to sit in the shit yes, and to, you know, uh, absorb it, like you said, deal with it, you know, get comfortable in it. Yes. We never grow at a soul. And I, you know, I'm here yep. to tell you right now, I'll, I'll be 51 in two days. And I truthfully can honestly say that I did not grow at all in this, at least incarnation until I was 43. And even at 43, yeah. uh, I had a lot to learn. You know, thankfully my wife has been my greatest spiritual mentor and we go back mm. and forth playing games with mentoring each other. And now it's kind of like, you know, that's not the way of the master, you know? So now it's kind of like, <laughs> Love it. now it's kind of like a joke between us and stuff like that. But you're right. I mean, no matter how advanced you get consciously, how aware you get, you know, how aware of subtle energies and energetic fields and etheric, you know, energies and, and just everything that comes about, you're still, as you said earlier, are human. You're still human. And, and, and we are fallible creatures in the third dimension. I mean, we are at the lowest, you know, probably level for a human to be from a vibrational standpoint. So even if you're a master, and again, and you've moved your energies up into the 400, 500, 600 levels of consciousness, for the most part, you're still going to have days yes. where you drop down below the line of integrity. And like you yes. said, no matter how hard you work on your inner self, and that is obviously the path, you will be triggered. There are yeah. things that are going to happen to you that are inevitable that you obviously consented to before you came here anyway. Exactly. So it's how you deal with these things at that time. And God knows I'm still a work in progress. You're a work in progress. I mean, we're all a work in progress. And it's it's that's the beauty is the recognition that it's okay to have ups and downs. It's just a matter of like, how do you act emotionally under the quote unquote times of stress. And you know this too, the stress at that moment in time may not even be anything but the greatest gift to you when you look at it from the future, you know, almost you always is. Yes. Almost always is because there's two things happening in that moment when you actually feel stressed out over something. There's either an unhealed wound that's showing itself to you. So yay, you get a chance to heal it. Right. So just heal your shit. That's right. number one. Number two is you can be completely fully healed of all of your wounds, inner child stuff. All that stuff can be healed in a, in a relatively short period of time, by the way, fully healed. But your soul, you are an infinite being, mm -hmm. which means you're not done growing. So how do you grow and expand? You get offered very generously by the universe a challenge. And it's, oh, this is making me uncomfortable. Look at this. This is beautiful. Can I offer myself love right now and nurture myself while I move through this challenge? Mm -hmm. See? So when you are, um, when you're giving your beautiful examples of, you know, how do you show up and how do you handle this when there's, when there's a challenge or something comes your way that's, that's unpleasant, it's, I want to be clear with people. I want to define this. Okay. Um, it doesn't mean that you don't feel anything negative. Mm -hmm. It's what do you do when you do feel something negative in your body? Do you go within? Do you bring love to your pain? Because mm -hmm. that's power. Right. 
And that's what we teach. That's part of how we, you grow as a light being and your darkness transmutes, your triggers dissolve away. Your wounds completely heal permanently when you learn the processes that we teach at Masters of Self University, because it's learning energetics that the negative emotion you feel or whatever triggered you, it activated programs within you that are unhealed or that are running on autopilot. Every human has that. Mm -hmm. But when you learn that's simply a moment, oh my gosh, I got triggered. That's showing me what I need to pay attention to. I need to bring love to this. I need to go deeper with this. And as I sit in my shit, here's the key of healing. Are you, do you know what it means in that moment to actually bring the vibrational frequency of love to it? Because you sit in your shit. It's a good start. It won't transmute the energy if you don't know how to transmute the energy. That's the key, right? So inner child, we need to go back and transmute the moment that these traumas and these pains were created. And then they're no longer a part of who you are. Literally, they're gone. They're gone. It's beautifully stated. You know, I, I, I when I have someone like you on the show, I, I, I feel like sometimes it's go outside of the boundaries of our talking points and really talk about, because again, you have a profound awareness of energetics, as do I. Probably I'm not at your level. Maybe that's why I'll maybe learn under you at some point. But um, I, I really do look, you know, going back to what you're saying, bringing love to the pain, bringing love to the shit, to the injury, to whatever it is that, you know, ails you to, to integrate. Um, most people they have at their basic, at their basis, you know, at base essence in the third dimension as these energy beings in these physical meat suits, their real limiting belief is death, right? It's the mm -hmm. finite aspect of existence. So, you know, when you can get to a place where you realize, again, you're an energy and that energy cannot die, it's infinite and ever expanding. And whether you consider that your soul or your chi or whatever you want to call it, it's infinite. So in this physical body, which may die or expire at some point now, where is the energy of your soul, your spirit go, right? Well, you know, it's going to keep going. Mm -hmm. So you get to that level of awareness and it's like, okay. I'm not going to die. Maybe this physical body will stop at some point, but I'm going to go keep going. So it's like, once you get there, and as you know, you know, if I'm quantifying it on the Hawkins scale, very few amount of people get to that level of awareness after probably many lifetimes. And some never do. They're still down here, vibrating yes. in victimhood. But when you get to that level of awareness, like, okay, I'm an infinite me. Now what? It becomes a lot easier to listen to someone like you or me or many people like us now who are out there speaking about this mm -hmm. because now there is nothing constraining you into this box that most people live in because it's like, I'm an infinite being. Yeah. And you know, the interesting thing about you, you bringing that up is I usually ask people, are you really afraid of death? That's a real thing. People really truly have that, Absolutely. that fear. They absolutely have the fear. But I take people deeper with that and say, are you really fearful of death? Why? Because what I see in most people, when I read their energies and I see what they're really afraid of, they're not so much afraid of death as they are dying before they lived their soul's purpose. Right, right. So when they are not awakened enough or healed enough or they don't feel like they're on soul purpose and their soul isn't being fulfilled, that's where that fear of death creeps in for many people because it's, oh my God, what if I die before I reach the level I'm meant to reach, before I learn what I'm meant to learn, before I fulfill my soul's goal and purpose for being here in this incarnation this time. Right, right. And if people look at it from that perspective, you know, and I invite people, you look at it however you want to, but I invite people to look at it from that perspective sometimes, because when we see it from that perspective, it's like, oh my gosh, so maybe I could focus on living my best life. And that means becoming my best self. Right. right. And that means I, I'm willing to now do the work to master myself. Your soul is never afraid of dying in human form. Absolutely correct. When your soul knows you are fulfilling what you came here to fulfill, right. the fear right. of death melts away when you focus on becoming the best human you can become. That makes your soul happier than anything. Rachel, that's beautiful. What, what do you, I got to ask you, what stops people from 
recognizing that from waking up to that aspect of what their purpose and their mission is. I mean, obviously the, the third dimension is very, the veil of, of forgetfulness in this dimension is obviously very thick. And a lot of people, a lot of people get caught up in drugs and alcohol and chasing Mm -hmm. money and material things and all these other things and you know, it blows out, but there are people that aren't into that, but they still just get stuck in their day-to-day grind. Maybe it's a cubicle that they go to and drive four miles and, you know, go to the same fast food place every night. And, you know, it's like, is is it, I don't want to label people or judge or condemn or anything like that, because I know that in this dimension, it is very difficult to figure this stuff out. And, And who knows, maybe you and I have been around many, many times and that's why we're here where we're at. But I mean, what do you think prevents most people from figuring it out? The, the very programs that they run, yeah. the very programs that they get imprinted from their parents growing up, family members growing up, society, cultural religion. bullshit, religion. religion is a big one. It comes from everywhere in every direction, the news, the programs that are running. So, so if we wake up to the programs that are actually running, that right there is starting the process of self-actualization. That is a step-by-step process. These are all of our coaching programs, by the way. This is exactly what people go through in our coaching programs. They learn deepest level of transformational healing, but they learn what programs they're running, the mental programs, the emotional programs, the behavioral programs, and the inner child wounds. When they see it, that's what we teach them. You see that's the gift of divine sight. So we open that third eye, becoming aware of the very programs you run, And people are, you wouldn't even believe when they see, oh my God, right? that's what I'm, that's why I'm still in scarcity. That's why my relationships keep going in the shitter. That's why I see it now. When they see it, they simultaneously simultaneously are learning exactly how to heal it. Nothing heals if you're not willing to see it. Why? Because once I see it, I can move and shift into the ways of oneness, the way of responsibility. I can take ownership of that. And when I realize I'm responsible, I'm willing to take ownership for this silly program that I run, I can then heal it. And here's how. It's a process. So the next thing to understand about all that is people have to be willing to do the work and learn the process with this stuff. There is no such thing as you learning something. Give me the hack. The easy button. Give me the Give easy me the button. easy button. Give me the five hacks. I cannot tell you how many times I've been asked to write magazine articles or go on TV to give the five or the ten hacks of fill in the blank. I can't even tell you, and I tell them no every time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going on to not to just no. I won't do it. You know why? Because it's feeding into the programs right. exactly. that if I just look at these five hacks, that's going to somehow miraculously change. That's zero responsibility for your own life exactly right it's zero responsibility there are 20 ways of universal oneness 20 ways of oneness the very first way is the way of responsibility so if you're not even willing to step onto the path of healing transformation true awakening become a more lighted being enlightenment that path of enlightenment if you're not willing to to take responsibility for every aspect of who you are and how you show up you will not have a life that is free from suffering you can't. It's impossible. Profound stuff. There's a couple other bullet points uh, that I want to get to with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think of like all the people like in the health you know, world who take 25 years to add 70 pounds of body fat. And then they want a six week program, right? Or they want a 90 day diet with recipes. I mean, it's but you're right. It's feeding yeah. the programs and the narrative, you know, the mainstream, the, you know, the, the edictors, you know, the, yeah. they, they continue to push this philosophy or this yeah. ideology into people's minds that, you know, and as you know, the internet now, and I like loving, I love this term, the internet of things, because everything is connected from a technology standpoint, not from a soul yeah. standpoint, because we know that, like you say, <laughs> the way of oneness, I love that by the way, but I mean, we are all unified at a soul level, but like, you mm-hmm. know, on the, on the technocracy side now, they're trying to unify everybody through the metaverse. Yeah. You know, don't even get me going. But like the reality is, is that people are just running programs. That's yes, exactly, that's, it. that's exactly. And they, and they're not aware of these programs until exactly. they, until they 
you know, meet someone like you, you know, go through the training and, yes. and as you, you know, you, you know, your stuff is not a hack either. I mean, this is Mm-mm. a discipline. You got to go to class. You got to study. You have to learn. You have to understand this. And, and again, all the great metaphysical teachers taught the same thing, right? Like yes. I always go back to the, the Egyptian mystery schools. You couldn't yes. even apply until you were 40. Exactly. And then at 40, you had to pass, I think, you know, five or six insanely brutally competitive physical tests Yep. to just be even accepted to then begin the work. And then, yes. you know what, 90% of the initiates fell out. Yes. <laughs> Yes, And here we are in modern day society where people with their easy buttons sitting on their sofas with their reclining couches and their 75 inch plasma TVs. Like, just tell me. Exactly. It's insane where we've gotten to just think about 2000 years ago to now. Nothing has gotten better. People have just gotten lazier. Yep. Because we want the quick fix. We've gotten entitled that is a plague that that has infest. There's an infestation of entitlement on our planet. Right, right. All the bullshit, pseudo spiritual teachings that you can have anything you want and you deserve it. You deserve. Why, it. why do you deserve it? Why do you? Are you serious? Why do you deserve it? Really? You just think because you're alive and breathing right. and taking up oxygen that you deserve whatever you want in life. The poison of entitlement is what prevents people from authentically awakening. Right, right, that's one of the biggest poisons of planet. And that's how evil gets in. That's how darkness takes over. Well, you're entitled. You deserve it. How about you focus instead of on what I deserve? How can I serve? Right. Right. How can I serve? Because you know, the real truth, the real truth is if I focus on me, and I heal me, and I become a more enlightened me, and I expand and evolve myself, and I become more powerful in my light and my love to walk through this earth as a lighted being, when I focus on that, and I serve others from a place of power like that, the universe just hands you shit. Right. Here you go on a silver platter. You've done some great work. Here it is. Right. And never... Is it, oh, I deserve, I, or, or I, I've, I'm owed that by the universe because I'm alive. Why don't you try earning something for once? Yeah, it's, 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 uh, we, we, we are very, very, very much on a similar wavelength. I, I, whenever I see a website that talks about get what you deserve or, you know, whenever I just see the word deserve, I instantly opt out. Bye. I'm gone because I already no. know that there's nothing here uh-uh. of value. And again, this is like you said, the narrative that keeps people vibrating in victimhood. Yes. You it got it. Keeps them in victimhood. They never take personal accountability. Nope. Never become sovereign, empowered, and free. Nope. It's just uh, uh, you know, again, the program circle and then the reincarnation wheel. Okay, a couple other points, and, and this one is a profound one. And I know for myself, this really affected me again into my early to mid forties because I am a storyteller, Uh right? So as an orator, a speaker, an author, all these little things, like I would always add things to make the story better, right? But Uh so your point is, and this is so profound, it's so true. Um, And I know we all do it at times, especially to make people that, you know, or who are our loved ones in our inner circles feel better. We do this, but lying 1% of the time means you're untrustworthy 100% of the time. Now, I know in my own personal life that is true. You know, my life, my wife will catch me, you know, hyperbolizing something and she goes, that's just bullshit. You're just fucking lying. <laughs> you know, and I'll be like, yeah, but it makes the story better, but it's not really lying, but it is lying because it's not 100% truth. So anyway, your comments on that. Yeah. So, um, it, I say that because it comes a lot with coaching couples, especially, of course, in their romantic relationships, right? right? Somebody um, cheated. There was infidelity. I see that so much. You know, it's a lot of what I deal with with when people come to me with they need help in their relationship. And um, what people don't realize is if you are lying by omission, if you are lying about things or have lied then that means you are always untrustworthy until you can become heal enough and transform yourself into the way of honesty. So that responsibility, that way of trust, 
right? If you're not functioning as a human who is honest and transparent and trustworthy, don't you dare, how dare you say to your spouse or your partner or somebody who questions you what you're doing, like it's them. You see how backwards we are? Like, If you realize that you still lie sometimes, then you have way more healing to do. And that person, how stupid is that person to actually trust you? And boy, do we get defensive. We get so offended, but I'm really telling the truth this time. Aw, but how many times don't you tell the truth? See, and people don't look at it that way. That until I've fully healed everything in me that wants to lie and sneak around and hide things, and I am not yet a fully trustworthy person, um, reliable being, that means I am unreliable. You can't be both. Right. If I'm not fully trustworthy, that means I am untrustworthy. You can't be both. You are either trustworthy, period, 100% of the time. Right. You're reliable when it comes to honesty, transparency, 100% of the time, or you're simply an unreliable, untrustworthy, dishonest person. It is one or the other. This is challenging people to look at it from a perspective that is um, you have a better chance at growing up and evolving and maturing emotionally and spiritually when you realize I need there's that radical responsibility word again. I need to take responsibility for myself and not be mad at my partner, my spouse, whomever who feels like they can't trust me. yet. It's not their job to learn to trust you again. That's the last thing I'm going to say about it. It is not your partner's job to learn to trust you again. It is your job to become trustworthy. Big difference between the two. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user, maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Well, I want to go deeper with you on that. So, and, and that's all amazing, but let's go deeper. So people lie, whether it's a giant lie or a white lie. And if you've ever read the book by Sam Harris, White Lies, it's a great book. I can't stand Sam Harris. Sam, if you're listening, F off. But he's, <laughs> you know, he wrote a really good book in that regard. You know, he's a hardcore atheist at this point. I don't know what he is. I don't care. I won't judge him. But the, re- the reality is, there's a really good book. And I read that book a long time ago. But it didn't really motivate me to take action. But I want to ask you, do people lie because it's just overall a lack of love and trust of self? Is that why they're lying, regardless of what it is? It, that's, that's, um, that's a simplified, easy, beautiful, practical way to look at it. Um, But let me just say this about it, because, because you've almost hit the nail on the head. What, when you do the work that we teach, for example, at Masters of Self University, you realize, okay, so I'm somebody that lies sometimes. So maybe people lie. What program are you running right. here? Right. What program are you running? Cause here's the, here's the truth for many, many learn to lie in toddlerhood. Absolutely. You know why they learn to lie in toddlerhood. Why? Because their parents low emotional IQ because they weren't raised by enlightened parents. What does that mean? They weren't raised by enlightened parents. This is what it means. Your toddler, your young child is, you know, oh my gosh, they learned that scribbling and coloring is amazing. It's so fun. Look at all these different colors I get to play with. And this is even more awesome. I'm doing it on the wall. I'm so proud of myself. This is exciting. I get to color all over the wall. And then the parent comes in and flips the fuck out. (laughs) And we don't realize the literal trauma that we cause in that moment. Why? I don't understand. I'm two year old. For example, my cognitive level as a two year old cannot comprehend what you're doing, flipping out about. There's where we start to lie that when you get caught doing something that your parents don't want you to do, you learn when they ask me, what am I doing? I start to say nothing at two years old. (laughs) That's where we teach our children to lie because we are not awakened enough. We don't have a high enough emotional IQ to say, oh my, well, you're coloring. Stop that right now. You're coloring all over the wall. We can't color on the wall, but here's, I'm going to take it even deeper. You never bothered to teach your children. Right. That means you didn't give them the crayons for the first time. Here's where we color. 
teaching, not telling your children. Right. Teaching them means you spend the time. So do we color over here on the wall? Never, no way. We don't color on the wall. They don't know. They don't know until you teach them. So really, when you do this level of coaching, you learn how to connect the dots to, oh my God, I'm completely sabotaging my freaking relationship because I colored on the fucking wall. Yeah, that's where your programs come from. I, it, it isn't from major trauma. You weren't kidnapped and taken as a sex slave. You colored on the fucking wall and it never got healed. <laughs> I seriously like, I want to cry right now because I mean, you literally awakened where that happened to me and it wasn't coloring on the wall. It was writing on the back of the couch. Oh, there you go. So, I mean, like, it's so crazy that my mind, you know, opened a portal to that exact memory yeah. as you started saying that, but yes. you're right. I mean, so really everything that we have that ails us, that causes us to run these programs or to be stuck in these programs really does come from early childhood experiences or even, you know, as you know, you know, past life experiences that were never integrated then. Yes. And so we've now brought these into yes. this into this current lifetime. And I, I just read an, a profound book, uh, you know, about uh, transpersonal and intergenerational trauma and how far it goes back, you know, the sins of the father, the sins of the yep. mother. And yep. it goes back, you know, six, eight, seven generations, the souls can be connected or whatever. And it's mind blowing how just one person or one teacher or healer or you know class like you teach can end all of it. All of it. Not just you, but your family. Yes. Like the DNA that is you're carrying this imprint through and forward, you know, through these generations. And again, these lifetimes, you can end it. And it's so profound to understand that. Yes. And I would, I, I assume that, you know, uh, that's part of your curriculum. hundred percent. It's part of our, that's what my mystical life coaches are getting certified in all of that. It's what our coaching programs offer. And you learn, here's the best part of our coaching programs. You learn how to do it for yourself. We're here to empower, not create codependency. Right. Like you need me forever. Right. That's what the psychic healing sessions are for that people can schedule. All of that, all of that, the deepest level of work, of transformation of everything, the DNA, the imprinting, the generational traumas, all of it. And that's why, you know, the work is so profound. I have amazing mystical life coach. They are some of the most amazing people in the whole world from all over the world. And they are just mastering this work. And the way that they can go out and heal people is just, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It sounds amazing. And I definitely want to learn more. Okay. So the last bullet point, <laughs> I saved the best for last is masculine energy. <laughs> is the number one cause of anxiety. Now, let me laugh about that and just make the statement, you know, like, as you, and you know this, but like, if you go out in the world and you observe now, masculinity is at an all time low point, right? Like men for the most part are low testosterone, you know, uh, effeminized, you know, there's so many uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals and the environment is contaminated and the GMO food. And I can go on and on and on. I, you know, I'm an expert in all that stuff, but it's like, mm -hmm. Masculine energy is a whole different thing altogether, but it's like there is a crisis, obviously, of consciousness with all the victimhood energy. But even a man who is masculine and does have, you know, optimized testosterone levels and does everything right, you know, can still have this issue. And so I kind of want you just to talk about it because, like, I've never seen it. I mean, I saw you talk about it with Trent. I mean, uh, Josh, but like, I'd like for you to talk about it on my show, too. Yeah. So here we have to start to learn the difference between masculine energy and masculine personality or right. masculine biology. They're not right. the same thing. Exactly. That's the first thing. So we have to learn that. That's part of what we teach in some of our classes. We have to, same thing with feminine energy, by the way, Right. feminine energy versus biology versus personality. Right. We lump them very ignorantly all together. Mm -mm. They, we need to we need to learn the truth about them. So masculine energy, divine masculine energy, is a um, it's a very linear tunnel vision focused. I'm going to get to the end. I'm going to complete the goal. It's a finisher energy. It is more of a sprinting energy. Right. Okay. Feminine energy is actually the energy that is expansive, that Creation. sees all things at one time is pure universal wisdom. Right. Feminine energy is actually the leader 
energy. Right. right. It sees all, so it plans, it builds the framework, and it guides, it leads. And then there's where the divine masculine energy comes in and takes everything to completion. If you were only in feminine energy, for example, nobody gets shit done. <laughs> nobody gets shit done. You wouldn't get shit done. You couldn't. You need the masculine to say, right. I, I hear your plan, feminine, beautiful, thank you, leader, and then go. And they right. finish and complete and get things done. So think about it. Your masculine energy is a very grounded strong, but also sprinting alert energy. And it's looking if I need to protect anything from coming in and disrupting and veering us off path from reaching the end goal. You can't sprint a marathon and not get anxiety and not be exhausted. So when people live in masculine energy all day, every day, guess what? It, it can't not cause anxiety in the body. The feminine is there to transmute and be peaceful, and right? So that's what we don't understand within ourselves. If you've ever looked at any enlightened being in human history, <laughs> really pay attention to how they showed up. They're in feminine energy about right. 80% of the time. That's balance. Feminine doesn't mean a feminine. Right. And that's where we have to start to learn and get the teachings out that people just think like you're feminine, that uh, -uh. your girly has right. nothing to do with divine feminine or divine masculine energy. So that's where we have to start is getting those teachings out and clearing up the nonsense that people are teaching out there. Yeah. I mean, when you really understand, you know, energy and you understand the poles, right? You have yes. the masculine pole and the feminine pole. And it's like you said, the, the feminine is the creation force. And the masculine is like you said, the finisher, you know, yes. the directional uh, bypass. It's, it, it's fascinating, but you're right. I mean, again, every, everything, you know, this, everything has been inverted. There's yeah. nothing in this dimension of the third dimension or whatever we, you want to call this, this viscous lower vibrational reality that hasn't somewhere, you know, been turned upside down. Um, I, including, I have, in, including uh, masculine and feminine or they're the energy of oneness. They're not right. separate. Right. Exactly. That's the other thing that's crazy is we we pitch it against each other like it's men versus women nonsense. And it's no, the energies themselves are actually the energy of oneness. It's just what we call the feminine aspects come up when they're needed right. or appropriate and vice right. versa. Yeah. Well, to that point, we all know that the height of uh, Western civilization was the 50s and the 60s, 40s, 50s and 60s, when the male and female stayed together in the home. And the feminine, which was, again, the creative energy, ran what she ran and the man did what he had to do. And so, you know, when we got into this modern day of, you know, each person, you know, single fa family parents or single um just single families, whether it's male or female, they're all trying to run both. They're trying to be representative of both energies. And it just almost is impossible to do yeah. that. And, and, and that's why it's so much better. And I don't want to get into that argument, but it's so much better when there is a male and female, or at least, a, you know, a mother and father, you know, to teach the child or the children, you know, what is optimal. And, and, and we've lost mm -hmm. that. We've, we've totally lost that. And like you said, everything is inverted with the awareness or the understanding of really what divine masculinity and divine. Exactly. So I think we are here when we create and really genuinely shift into the new golden age of harmony, mm -hmm. that is when we'll be in harmony with the truth. Cause a lot of people aren't ready to hear the truth. They hear what they want to hear. They're still stuck on this. My truth bullshit. I always tell people go fuck your truth. Go fuck your, I don't give, fuck your truth. You know where that comes from? It comes from entitlement. It comes from ego. It comes from right. wanting. It comes from I deserve bullshit. Right. Get out of here. There is the truth in every situation. And if you can function and learn how to see and open up to the truth, that right. is what sets you on the path of becoming a more evolved and more lighted being. None of this my truth bullshit. That's so beautiful. I mean, think of how many people literally try to quantify that there are levels of truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous. If you've ever read a single philosophical text, <laughs> you understand that there is just truth and truth is only for the most sincere. Yes. It's literally that simple. There are no it, levels. Yes. There's no my version and your version. It's truth. Yeah. 
and oneness in the universe. And if you don't understand those, you know, uh, terminologies, then forget it. I mean, it, 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 that blows me away. I mean, that, that has yeah. become the new age statement of like the last 10 years that there are levels of truth. It's like, yeah. no, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's pure ignorance. Mind blowing stuff. Yeah. All right, let me put your stuff up here. What a profound podcast. Um, Rachel, I'm really honored that you came on the show today. I think we covered a lot of really amazing ground. We talked about a lot of amazing stuff. I definitely am going to, when, when when we stop recording, I'm going to talk to you for a few uh, and get your cell and we'll connect and stuff like that. But if someone wants to podcast with you, uh, wants to connect with you, what would you have them do? Yeah. Go to the website, mastersofselfuniversity.com. You can contact, we have our coaching programs. You can contact my PR agent is all on the website. So go have fun on the website, check us out, see what you're interested in, and we'll see how we can help you. I'll just say this to you guys. Uh, first off, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. So go to mastersofselfuniversity.com. Check them out also on IG, which is Rachel underscore Fiore. Uh, as I said, I literally was so moved and inspired when I first heard her speak, uh, that I went through their application program to look into this myself. And then my, on the plane, uh, the Gmail thing blew up and I never went back into it cause I've just been busy the last week and a half, but I am going to talk to you about that. Uh, I, I really do, uh, talk to a lot of amazing people, you know, at the top of the list. Uh, I'm grateful that, you know, there are people out there like you teaching people, um, oneness. I love that the ways of oneness, you know, the 20 different things, which I'm very interested in finding out more about, but again, I'm very humbled and very grateful and honored that you came on here today. So thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Awesome, Rachel. So guys, again, go to masters of self university.com, check her out on IG and remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see you guys very soon.